Hi Renovators and welcome back. Um, we really hope everyone enjoyed part one of this case study uh, and we're looking forward to discussing uh, the, the, the second part and how we sort of progressed uh, through the project management and into the sales of this project. Um, firstly, uh, a small mistake I made in the, in the original presentation, my wife pointed out to me, uh, we actually bought the houses as a 3-1. Uh, the bathroom downstairs when we purchased it was just a toilet, uh, which we actually then uh, changed into a full bathroom with a shower and a vanity, obviously adding quite a lot of value to the property, uh, but without changing the structure of the, of the house or, or really changing any internal walls at all. Um, so I, I guess the next step is the project management stage. Uh, very, very important. Um, honestly, probably not as important as actually sourcing and doing the feasibility. Uh, I mean, if you think about, uh, you know, let's say you do a project, uh, it costs $400,000. Um, your entire renovation budget might be 40 or 50 grand. Uh, but if you go off by 10% on your, your purchase price, uh, that 10% is, is the equivalent of your entire renovation budget. So you'd much rather be off by 10% on your, on your renovation side than you would be by 10% on actually purchasing and, and finding the right price for a property. Um, so for this project, it was our first project. We were very, very hands-on, uh, which is something that we've sort of moved away from since then. Uh, we've got more of a focus on project management. Uh, for a number of reasons, but I've, I've, I've gone into DIY a little bit on our blog um, and why we think DIY is not really sustainable and it's not really a way that you can scale these projects. You know, you can do one at a time uh, with DIY in mind, um, but if you want to do two, three, four, five uh, a year or, or a couple of projects at a time, uh, you have to look at it from a project manager point of view while you have trades doing all the bits and pieces. So. Step one of, of the project uh, timeline is obviously the strip out. Uh, we did a lot of this ourselves. Uh, we removed the kitchen bench tops. Uh, you know, we, we, we removed all the, the, the fixtures and the fittings and the blinds. We, um, we removed all the carpet ourselves, which was, I mean, it was one of the most disgusting things we've ever done. Um, as I mentioned in the previous uh, clip, we bought a house that, that previous owners had had a sick dog. Uh, the carpet underlay was was saturated and it was really really smelly we had the gas masks on and everything um, and we also made a big mistake on this one we didn't have the skip ready right at the start of the project so we had to rip up all the carpet uh, obviously realized the skip wasn't there and we had to double handle it basically so we moved it all into the garage and then when the skip came we had to pick it all up again and throw it in the skip which which just added to the uh, the sort of dismay of of getting stuck into that stinky carpet. Um, so make sure you have your skip on site uh, day one. Skip should be there before you take anything apart because you want to be putting that rubbish straight in the skip. You don't want to be double handling it and, and causing more time and, and, and effort for and potentially uh, costs for yourself and, and your trades. Um, it's also a good idea uh, while we're on that topic, uh, have a portal on site. Um, if you don't, a portaloo can probably cost you around maybe $500 over the month or the four weeks. If you don't have one on site, uh, you're gonna lose a lot of time uh, with tradies having to go off and, and find a toilet somewhere. You know, it might be a shopping center five or 10 minutes away. Uh, you could potentially lose half an hour, 45 minutes just by them having to go to the bathroom, uh, you know, once a day. Um, so during the strip out stage, we had a lot of the trades come in. Um, we had to remove a lot of sheeting. Um, Obviously non asbestos. If it was asbestos sheeting, you've got to get the the, the license removal guys in to get rid of it. Um, very very important because if you you know have a, have a the plan of getting your carpenter to strip out your bathroom um, and he pulls off a sheet and it's asbestos, that everything has to stop uh, until you can get the professionals in. So if you think it's asbestos, you may as well just pay the money to get the guys in, strip it out, and then everyone can go in with a clean slate. Anyway, so we, we had some of the sheeting stripped off. Uh, we had to expose some of the areas. The front um, wall and the front entry area had some leaks going through it uh, from the leaky gutters and leaky windowsills. Um, so we had to strip all that off and check, obviously, that there was no rot. Uh, we were lucky there was no rot, um, but that all had to get done. Uh, we also had the guy come in and spray the roof. So that was two or three days. Uh, he comes in, cleans it, 
uh, gives it a, a, a couple of coats of sealant and then uh, resprays it a new colour. Um, also, the upstairs bathroom had to be fully stripped in this house. So, obviously, we're a big fan of you know your tile paints and your budget approaches to bathrooms, but this particular case, it had a tub that was uh, probably a metre long, uh, which is very, very strange. I guess it was a, a baby bathing type tub, um, but not really sort of something that's, that's sought after in a modern house. Uh, so there's no way to get around that. We had to strip the whole bathroom uh, and, and start again. Uh, we ended up putting in quite a nice freestanding tub, uh, which obviously added quite a bit of value there. Um, downstairs, the bathroom, there wasn't a lot of stripping. Uh, it was all, a lot of the wall framing was sort of already exposed. Um, so in this stage, there wasn't too much to do downstairs except get rid of the carpet. Uh, some of the roofing uh, was all collapsing in and there, there were other bits and pieces that needed to be done. Um, so that was all done probably over the course of about, I'd say about a week. Uh, and then we moved into stage two. So stage two of the, uh, the project uh, timeline, uh, it's obviously the rough in. So at this stage, you get your plumbers and, and your electricians in, um, they rough in any of the, the wire changes, any of the plumbing changes. Um, so the downstairs bathroom, actually and the upstairs bathroom, was quite a big job for the plumber, the rough in, um, because obviously we're, we're, we're changing everything. We're putting um, new positioning, new piping. Uh, downstairs, they actually had to cut the, the piping for the, the shower uh, into the slab and, and, and sort of do all, do all of that, as well as running it through the walls and all that. So it was, it was a fairly large job. Uh, even saying that, it only probably took a couple of days. Um, we had the chippies come in. The chippies, uh, sorry, the carpenters looked at the, the deck, the stairs, uh, as well as the leaking areas, and obviously made all the repairs to the, to the timber and everything there. Um, and the plaster was in uh, and started sheeting. There was a lot of resheeting, a couple of rooms, um, all of the exterior um, eaves had to be done. Um, there, there was quite a bit of sheeting that needed to be done, so we got started on that straight away. During this stage as well, um, Obviously I mentioned we did quite a bit of DIY on this one. So uh, my wife and I took all of the uh, kitchen cabinetry off and we actually painted it with cabinet paint. So you'll see some pictures uh, before and after of the kitchen. Uh, you'll see it obviously looks quite new, it looks good. Uh, all of that cabinetry is the old, is the old stuff. Um, and all we did was give it a brand new coat of paint uh, ourselves, probably cost a few hundred dollars. Um, so the next step uh, in the project timeline is obviously sort of the, fi the fittings and the fixtures. So uh, we had a new stone bench top put on uh, by our kitchen suppliers. Um, so that probably cost less than $2,000, but made a huge amount of difference in the kitchen. Uh, went from an old, a really worn looking laminate to a really nice clean stone, uh, which obviously adds a massive amount of value. Um, new appliances in the kitchen again. Um, you know, it wasn't very expensive. We, we replaced the stand-up stove with a stand-up stove uh, rather than trying to go inbuilt and fancy, but we made it uh, stainless steel. It looks fantastic. Uh, so you really can do a kitchen without having to spend too much money. You just have to sort of think, what are the value adding aspects? Uh, and you have to focus on those rather than focusing on all the other bits and pieces. Um, obviously this is all the bathroom fittings as well. So we got the bathroom tiled, uh, waterproofed, put in uh, all, of, all of the toilets and the baths and the fittings and the fixtures, um, uh, and, and obviously the glass and things like that. Uh, during this stage also we worked uh, with a gardener, we did quite a lot of work ourselves to tidy up the garden. So a lot of hedges uh, that needed trimming, we had to redo the garden beds, uh, like the edging, we had to relay some, some turf. Uh, it was it was quite a big job to do this garden as everything was just overgrown and hadn't been tended to in probably a decade um, Which which was good. I mean this is a stage where you sort of start to see things really come together uh, You start to see the property really change um, Which is obviously very exciting when, you, when you're doing a renovation So uh, The next stage in the project timeline obviously uh, stage four is to get the painting done and take care of the flooring so um, when we, the way we do our painting is we get one company to do the exterior, one company to do the interior, which means they can run consecutively rather than having one company doing the interior and then moving to do, to do the exterior. 
uh, which obviously saves quite a lot of time. Um, so we got the painting done first, and then we had uh, the, some guys come in, they had to lay some carpet, they had to level out the floor downstairs with some new concrete uh, filler, and, and then we had vinyl planks down the, for the whole of the downstairs, uh, which is a really good budget uh, way to, to approach flooring. Um, so once that is done, I mean, essentially, that, 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 that's, that's the bulk of it. Uh, you know, from there, you move on to the staging and, and, and the sales of the, of, of the, of the property. Um, so again, we, we had to do, or we tried to do a lot of DIY ourselves on this project. Um, we regretted quite a lot of it. Uh, a lot of it was, was a lot harder than we thought it would be. And a lot of it we actually had to get trades in anyway because we just couldn't do a good job. You know, we tried doing the, the, the leveling out of the floors and, and that sort of thing. It just didn't go very well, it got very messy. Uh, we ended up just paying for someone to come and do it anyway. So be mindful when you're thinking about what you can do DIY. Uh, if you're not uh, skilled and practiced in that area, you know, you may end up running into problems. It might just be worth getting a trade in, getting it done and doing it quickly and doing it to a really good standard. Um, on this particular project, we also really had that, that focus of getting budget solutions um, for everything. So, you know, there, there are a lot of ways you can cut down your costs. I mean, our kitchen looked like a brand new kitchen, but it probably cost maybe $3,000, if that, uh, you know, laminate paint obviously we got some nice new bench tops because we think that is something that really is important uh, and for us stone to laminate is, is just a huge difference but we did get our stone bench tops for less than we were being quoted for laminate bench tops just by shopping around and finding the right supplier uh, obviously new appliances new sink uh, and then a, a really nice coat of paint and it just looked fantastic um, our vanity that we put that we put in the downstairs bathroom that you'll see in the photos uh, I think it cost us ten dollars. Uh, might have been five dollars. Someone was essentially wanting it out of their house. Uh, it was on Gumtree. We found it. We went to, to to pick it up. It had a little chip underneath. Nothing you would see because it's on on the underside of the bowl. And uh, and yeah, we, we took it and and that saved us you know probably three hundred dollars or two two hundred to three hundred dollars on that vanity. Um, the Roof spray, we've already discussed. It's a great budget alternative if you have got an asbestos roof. Uh, just make sure you do it by, get it done by a qualified uh, and licensed uh, trade uh, who will give you the right paperwork uh, to say it's been done. Um, and also, I mean, upstairs, you know, you know we, we, they had laminate flooring, which we could have ripped up and then tackled the, the, the uh, timber floorboards and polished them up. But... It just didn't make sense. The laminate flooring was in quite good condition, and it would not have added. It probably would have cost, you know, at least three or four thousand dollars to rip it all up and polish the the timber floors. Uh, it just wouldn't have added the value. So we kept all the laminate flooring. Um, so so there are a number of things we did on this project that really brought that project cost down as much as possible. Which is lucky, obviously, because on other places, you know, we we did blow out. Um, just mainly because of. of um, you know, issues with, with, with my estimations on, 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 as it was our first project, uh, and also the fact that, you know, there were bits and pieces we didn't notice, uh, things that needed replacing that we didn't think would need replacing, and trades that we thought we could do DIY that we ended up not being able to do DIY. Um, so we completed the renovation just over four weeks, uh, and, and obviously we were absolutely stoked with, with how it looked and how it went. So originally we had planned for this to be a two-part series, but uh, there was just so much information uh, that we had to include. Uh, it would have ended up going for about 45 minutes. So I've split this second part into project management and uh, next week we'll talk about the, the staging and the sales and all of the issues we went through there. Uh, we ended up having to go through three contracts on this house uh, and also obviously all the big lessons that we learned uh, and, and big things we took away from this project. So thanks very much for tuning in. Uh, please don't forget to check out our Instagram and our Facebook, Hooper Homes Briz, B-R-I-S, uh, as well as our blog uh, for more property content and information on our website, uh, which is at hooperhomes.com.au.